Presentation number 166. Procreation is a crime. In other words, anti-natalism. This may be a very strong statement, but among the anti-natalism, natalists, uh, among the anti-natalists, this kind of statement is everywhere. Uh, it's very common. We are used to it, and uh, that's how I, how we feel. That's. Oh, th that's how I, uh, that's the, the uh, very honest feeling or idea that we have about, about cr procreation or having children of your own. Of course, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good thing to, ha to uh, adopt children and save them from uh, poverty or uh, from war-torn countries by uh, adopting by adoption uh, you can uh, you can uh, help reduce misery in the world but even in even in ad adoption I uh, I can't I can't help be I can't help but be uh, a bit uh, cynical about abo ab ad ad adoption too. Why? Because uh, if you adopt three children, uh, if you adopt one child from a war-torn country, for example, from Africa, then there will be one less child in that war-torn country, and then one less uh, one less uh, one less unhappy child means that the locals may have may have uh, uh, may uh, think that uh, they can have one more child it's not s as simple as that it, it's a it's it's a lot more complicated, I know, but uh, suppose if uh, first world uh, first world uh, country people adopt one million children from war torn countries in in, uh, in Africa, poverty stricken countries from Africa, then one million un one million less unhappy children means that. Uh, there will be uh, the, there will be uh, one million less unhappy children from Africa. The one hundred uh, one hundred uh, no no one million uh, one million miserable children will be removed from uh, from from that con those countries. Then uh, the locals will feel will naturally feel relieved. Of having, uh, of having gotten rid of uh, those uh, miserable children, and then they will, fe they will begin to feel like procreating a bit more. Then uh, the the vicious cycle uh, continue would continue, right? So I, even with the idea of adoption, I couldn't help but be. Uh, Cynical. So it, it would be better not to to adopt children. That's what I what I can't help uh, feeling. I'm sorry, uh, but I but I admire very m I greatly admire those who those adopters. Uh, I wish I could do the same. But I'm not. But I'm not that patient. I'm not that. Uh, I'm. I'm not that good enough to uh, feel forgiving to stupid parents for their 
for their absent-minded uh, decision to have so many children, even though they were, even though they are so poverty-stricken or from war-torn countries. So, uh, back to my main subject: procreation is a crime, and I need to listen. I've always felt that uh, having children of your own is a crime. I don't, I don't, I don't want to impose this idea on parents who uh, who have already had children of their own. They have, they are, they have children already. So I, so I won't go to them, s telling them. You are criminals. No, I won't, wouldn't say that. Of course not. I'm not that cruel. In fact, I'm much too caring. I'm much too compassionate. That's why I have become antinatalist. Antinatalist. I care for children and the parents and poor people people in war-torn countries, women, women having been raped, and so on and so forth. I have been much too, uh, so compassionate for them, and that's precisely why I have become anti-natalist. I haven't become anti-natalist because I hate children. No, no. So, in order to, uh, I can't help. Despite all that, I can't help saying that procreation is a crime because I know there are many people out there stupidly, absent-mindedly, carelessly producing children, even though they know they are too poor to raise children in good enough environments. Yeah, I know, it's easy to say that uh, money is not everything. But, uh, okay then, there are children who, despite, despite poverty, despite their poverty, they can grow up to be fine children, fine adults. Yes, I know that. But suppose some of them, some of those children, suppose some of those children, even though not many, even though they are very few, some of those, those children might might turn out to be uh, very hungry for knowledge. Uh, they want to go on to graduate school. They want to go abroad for study. Then what? Parents, m their parents might say, "Okay, uh, if you want to go, if you want to go to university or uh, higher learning, then work and uh, save enough money." to send yourself to uh, to a to a school of higher higher learning or um, to a school in uh, overseas whatever uh, you can do whatever but uh, those uh, those poverty stricken families tend to be tend to hate schooling and uh, they might be they might they they are li very highly likely to uh, to have some contempt to have a strong contempt for um, their children wanting to go on to higher learning
my fam my uh, parents were that way they had a lot of contempt for intellectuals because uh, because they thought whether correct or not they thought they believed that uh, the intellectuals at least many in many of them many of the intellectuals are not compassionate n uh, too selfish to too selfish to to to, to uh, get credit f for themselves and uh, get titles uh, get and uh, too absorbed in their own uh, in their own work that uh, to uh, to uh, consider to be considerate to of uh, of poorer people uh, of uh, of uh, le less intelligent people so uh, my both of my parents had a lot of contempt for the intellectuals and uh, they didn't want me to they didn't want me to get uh, a higher education that I than than what I had than what I got uh, poor people poor people and poorly educated people tend to be that way they have been in a way in a way many of them have been uh, were deprived themselves they were deprived uh, of the child of the education they deserved and uh, later on in their uh, in their uh, later stages of uh, adulthood they developed a certain degree of uh, contempt for uh, knowledge uh, for la higher learning and for uh, the intellectuals they, they had to do that they had to to develop develop some kind of uh, contempt for the intellectuals because they at first they wanted to learn they wanted to go on to higher learning but uh, but they were <coughs> they were deprived of the opportunity because of the poverty of the their families and then they they had to put up with the low level of education uh, other people might say oh then uh, if 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 such pe such poor people are eager to learn then why don't they get scholarships it's easy for them to say that some people can't even get scholarships scholarships go to family families and students with parents understand uh, with a uh, high degree of understanding there are other people very often uh, parents from very poor families are usually from ununderstanding I mean they those poor people with 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 a with a low very low e educational background are often from fam from uh, parents who with little understanding of anything uh, so that uh, so much so, so that uh, they don't have any idea of scholarships and uh, they don't even bother to to follow the formalities for getting scholarships for their children and uh, when the ch students are bright enough and eager enough to go on to higher learning and they, when they want to get a scholarship that ch the, the parents with a low level of understanding often uh, laugh away the idea of getting a scholarship uh, it's rather complicated. Uh, many of them often uh, uh, evade tax, uh, paying taxes, and when they evade, when they are, they are, they are too poor to pay the taxes, and uh, they often evade 
paying the ta their taxes. And when they evade their uh, evade, uh, when they evade paying their taxes, they lose the opportunity to get scholarships for their children. Uh, the scholarships are for students from families who have paid taxes. Okay then, uh, other people might say, okay, uh, but the poor poor people, when they can't uh, pay the, their taxes, they can apply for uh, tax exemption. They can go to the city hall and uh, tell them that they are too poor to to uh, pay their taxes. And then the city taxes, the city office, the city, the city hall uh, uh, will uh, will uh, give them uh, will exempt them from paying their taxes easy for them again to say that. Very often, those poor families, they don't want to go to the city hall for uh, tax exemptions. They uh, uh, they can't put up with the, the, the insult that uh, the, the city office, the city hall, uh, give to, to the poor families. So they don't tell the city hall, they just evade paying their taxes. So they, so they uh, lose their chances to get scholarships. So there are such families. It's not, it's not the way, it's not so simple as uh, it's not so simple as other people think other people from not so bad families not so dysfunctional families not so poor families those normal the, those people from more or less normal families don't know how it is with poverty-stricken families or uh, uh, parents with parents who have been deprived of the education they deserved when they were when they were very young and so on they don't know how it is with the hardships they they would they might have had to undergo when they were younger. So it's not as simple as that. Anyway, uh, okay, I was talking about, uh, what I was talking about is that, uh, suppose, uh, suppose if you, if your child, even if you are poor, uh, you, you, you are, one of your children might, might want to go to higher learning, then what? You are too poor to send him, send them to <coughs> higher schooling, <coughs> higher learning. Then what? <coughs> children, the children, yes, <coughs> they can work their, they can work <coughs> their way. They can work their way through college, all right, and graduate school, and they can uh, earn enough, m and they they can uh, work hard enough to to uh, save enough money to go on to to study abroad too. Until they get an get a PhD, for example, is enough for them to say. But uh, yes, there are, I know there are some people who actually achieve all that. But if only when they have, yes, uh, financially they ha they may have had a very hard, uh, very a uh, great hardship. But as for the emotional support, they have, they may have had enough of it from their parents. But uh, e very often, in those families, the parents are not understanding enough. They despise their children's uh, 
desire for the ambition for higher learning. They just don't understand the concept of learning. That's how it is with the uh, proletarians. They, uh, that's how it is with the uh, lo lower classes, the working people, the working uh, class. People in the working class, many of them, not all, but uh, many of them, maybe most of them, despise the, po the concept of learning the concept of study, especially graduate school and uh, studies abroad. Oh, uh, of course, I know that uh, as for engineering, medicine, law, and other practical disciplines, as for those, even the working class people understand them understand the importance of such disciplines. So we, uh, when they are children want to go to they want to go to uh, medical school or uh, law school or law want, they, when they want to study law or medicine or engineering of course the working people the working working class parents support them support them all oh, okay we have no money to to send you to uh, such schools but if you if you work, if you work part time uh, while going to college and uh, graduate school, okay, okay, go there. We will support you and so on. But suppose their children, if their their children want to study philosophy, archaeology, history, linguistic, or sorry, something. Very few of the working class. Uh, 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 parents understand such ambitions. It's completely different between the classes. As for the uh, educated classes, we love classes. Bourgeois, and the, as for the bourgeois, they may, many of such people in the bourgeoisie understand the value of philosophy, literature, and uh, linguistics, and uh, archaeology, but not the working class people. Of course, they can't, for one thing, they can't afford to do that. The working class people, for the working class people, uh, wor surviving every, uh, every day is hard enough. So how can they understand, how can they afford to understand the value of archaeology, which which is almost, which seems almost uh, pointless and insignificant and uh, useless, completely useless to them. Archaeology doesn't bring uh, food on the table, but for the bourgeois, uh, even if their their sons and daughters go to study archaeology and uh, get a PhD, and and uh, if they remain jobless. Even if they, they remain jobless for a long time to come, uh, the bourgeois parents may not care that much. At least they don't care as much as the working class parents may may care about about such a, about such uh, sons and daughters. So it's completely different. The situations are completely different. So don't, bourgeois people, please don't dare to to judge the working class people uh, for their lack of understanding for their children who might want to go to go on to graduate school and go to study abroad, uh, especially when they uh, want to uh, study non-practical. Uh, disciplines such as philosophy, archaeology, linguistic, and so on. And I happen to be, I happen to have been such a son uh, with uh, with a desperate yearning for knowledge in 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 such. Uh, 
seemingly useless uh, disciplines, such as uh, uh, discipline, uh, such as uh, linguistics, philosophy, and literature. I was such a I was such a son, and uh, nobody among me, uh, I mean nobody around me, understood how important it was for me to to pursue such knowledge, seemingly useless knowledge. So that's why my my hunger for knowledge was so intense that I could have murdered some somebody or I could have gone insane, literally insane, or I could have committed suicide. Or I could have become a terrorist, like a, like a like jihads or like 911 terrorists. I could have become one of those. Actually, I could have become one of those because of my hunger, terrible hunger, awful, excruciating hunger, starvation for knowledge. I was I was that miserable I have all the time and uh, I was my my hunger for knowledge was so intense that uh, whenever I was in the company office or whenever I was a, uh, I was at the desk as a school teacher I was I was constantly, how do you say, tormented. I was in constant term, internal turmoil at all times because of my, because of my intense starvation, hunger for knowledge. Even if I had to, Suppose, uh, suppose I had been born an aristocrat. Suppose I hadn't been. I had. I had. Uh, I suppose I hadn't. I uh, suppose I hadn't had to uh, work at all in order to support myself. Even then. I would have suffered uh, all the same uh, because of my hunger for knowledge. My hunger for knowledge was that intense. Even if I had gone on to graduate school and uh, even if I had uh, managed to, 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 to get a PhD in uh, linguistics and literature and so on, even if I had uh, stayed in college until I was 40 years old, even then, I would have remained hungry for knowledge even after that. I was, my hunger for knowledge was that it is. Even if I had studied for, uh, for uh, uh, let's say, uh, 14 hours, uh, 16 hours every single day for 40 years, even then, I would have still remained hungry for knowledge. I would have yearned for more. I was that, my hunger for knowledge was that in this. Do you understand? Do you, do ever, do any of you ever understand my intense hunger for knowledge? I was that hungry for knowledge. So, so as a, as a son of a working class family and uh, and uh, while uh, while working for many hours every uh, every day and every week 
throughout the year while going going on going to college and uh, when I uh, didn't have enough time to associate with other uh, uh, college pals who aspired to become uh, uh, scholars and college professors uh, later on I didn't have enough time to associate with those people who were who were my likes who who uh, thought and felt alike uh, alike uh, in the same way as I did I didn't have t time enough to enough time to uh, associate with uh, such people I was working I was I was busy instead tutoring every day and then right after my tutoring job I had to I had to run back to to the library or to, to home or uh, even while yes I of course uh, in trains when I was on the train too uh, I was always reading even in crowded trains in Japan in Japan uh, trains train cars are packed like sardines like this and uh, everybody is there and uh, I didn't have I didn't have enough space to move my move my uh, arms, so m my arms were like this, and uh, I was holding the uh, holding uh, one of those um, what uh, one of those what <laughs> one of those uh, leather um, arm rest uh, uh, rings you see R rings from a belt. Uh, attached to the ceiling in a train. I had to grab one of those rings like this and uh, with the other with the other uh, hand I had to hold uh, uh, a book written in English even though I, my intelligence was not high enough to to understand what what is said in the English book I was trying to read and uh, I desperately wanted to understand it even in crowded trains oh well, I was I was that way all the time uh, after the tutoring job I was tired after a long day I was tired but still half half asleep but because of the because of the, because of the tiredness of fatigue I had to open my eyes I had to force myself to open my eyes wide and look at those letters written in English which is which is which was totally uh, alien to me English is foreign to me of course and I had to struggle to understand understand it I wanted to learn and learn and learn and study and study and study and people la would laugh at me sneer at me why hey uh, hey OED what what are you doing you work and work as tutors and uh, you work too much um, you work too much and you work you study all the time and what do you do for fun why don't you enjoy your life and in those days everybody uh, on Japanese uh, campuses university campuses had a lot of time for for play for a recreation they uh, enjoy your life on the campus that was the catchphrase for most people, for most uh, university students in those days, when I was young, uh, 40 years ago. Nobody studied or worked hard in a, uh, as hard as I did in those days. Not today either. So I had to work in order to support myself. 
the money I had accumulated uh, from my uh, the money I the money I earned uh, in in my part-time job in my part-time jobs uh, as uh, as a tutor was not enough to to save some money left. So all my all my money that I was earning, even though I was working hard, uh, the money I was earning was not enough. Was uh, was just enough. Was it was just enough to support me in my uh, in uh, paying for my tuition and uh, paying for my books that I need desperately needed and for my the food I, I eat, ate and for the, the accommodation and so on and I had no money left and uh, look at uh, look at other um, students they were rich enough they were not that rich but uh, they were normal they were from normal families, so a parent, th their parents uh, gladly sent them, even though they didn't uh, work that hard part time. They, uh, their parents, sent them if if their sons and the daughters were eager enough to learn. They sent them abroad to the United States or to Britain for study for a year or two. And they went on to graduate school and then to to uh, prestigious uh, companies or uh, or um, they became uh, college professors later on. But I, I was I was always beneath them. I was always, you know, even though even though I spoke better English than they did, even though I ha worked. I studied and worked as part-time jobs, even though I worked in every way than they did, even though I was more at, uh, more better at, in my studies and uh, I spoke even though I worked I was spoke bet far better English, I, even though I wrote far better English than they did, I stayed home without going to without going abroad and they went on with the help of their parents they went on to to graduate schools and uh, were abroad for study and then they easily relatively easily uh, more easily than I did anyway they relatively easily they went on to graduate school and uh, and uh, they relatively easily landed on to uh, prestigious companies and uh, jobs as uh, college professors and so on. And I, on the other hand, I had, had to struggle so hard, so much. And I was in constant turmoil. Here I have been ranting. Uh, 38 uh, minutes have passed, so I have to, so I have to uh, stop here now. Uh, anyway, uh, procreation. Procreation is a crime, especially if you. Procreation is a crime, especially when you consider uh, some of your children might turn out to be just like I am. If your children are not e eager enough to learn, to study, then there would be no problem. Money, they don't have, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't need so much money. They just go on to work, work as a corporate employee or something, and they can happily uh, live happily ever after. But me, no. Okay. So, uh, procreation can be a crime anyway. Thank you.